In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a voltage surge protection transient suppressor circuit. Now, these circuits are important because the voltage of your power source is not always constant. It can vary. And sometimes it can spike. It can spike to a point where it can cause damage to your circuit. So let's say that your circuit device can handle a maximum voltage of 12.6 volts. What do you do when the voltage exceeds that? How do you prevent the voltage from going beyond 12.6 volts? Now, in this video, we're going to talk about how to do that. But let's talk about devices that can cause a transient voltage. That is a short-lived high voltage spike that really doesn't last long. It may last a millisecond, a microsecond, or even one second. Inductors are devices that can generate high voltages. Anything that contains coils of wire like transformers, or even motors. Whenever there's a current flowing through an inductor, a magnetic field is present inside of that inductor. Now, if you increase the current, the magnetic field will expand. It's going to get bigger. As the current is increasing, the inductor is absorbing energy from the circuit, thus causing the magnetic field to expand. Now, what happens when the current decreases? Let's say if you open a switch or if you create an open circuit by flipping a switch. When the current decreases, the magnetic field collapses and that stored energy is now released in the form of high voltages. And those high voltages can damage your circuit. So now we need to talk about how to protect the circuit from these high voltages. Now, there's a special device that we could use to accomplish this and it's called a Zener diode. Let's talk about the Zener diode. So this is the symbol for a regular diode. And adding these two extra uh, line segments will give us the symbol for a Zener diode. When the Zener diode is forward bias, the voltage drop across the Zener diode is 0.6 volts. It's basically the same as the voltage drop of a regular silicon diode which could be 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts, sometimes as high as 0.8 volts, depending on the amount of current flowing through it. But for this example, we're going to say it's 0 0.6. Now for a xenodiode, the voltage drop is different when it's in reverse bias mode. The xenodiode is actually designed to operate in this region. And the voltage can vary. It's called the zener voltage. Certain diodes can have a voltage drop of 3 volts, others could be 9, some could be 15, some can be 20. So you can select their, the Zener diode with a specific voltage drop. We're going to select one with a voltage drop of 12 volts or a Zener voltage of 12 volts. So now let's draw the circuit. The first thing we need is our voltage variant power source. And then we're going to use two Zener diodes connected like this. And then we're going to use a fuse just in case the current is very high. We want to protect our circuit from high current surges. And then here is our device. That's the device that we want to protect. So let's say current is flowing in this direction. That is, whoops, during the positive half cycle of the sine wave. So when current is flowing in this direction, let's call this D1, D2, F1. As it flows through the first Zener diode, it's in forward bias mode. So the voltage drop will be 0.6 volts. As the current flows through the second Zener diode, it's in reverse bias mode, so the voltage drop will be 12 volts. If the voltage, if the total voltage is less than 12.6, current will not be able to flow through D1 and D2. But if the voltage is greater than 12.6, this part becomes conductive. Current will flow in that direction. So thus, if the voltage is less than 12.6, the only way the current can flow is through the device. 
if the current if the voltage is greater than 12.6 instead of flowing through the device it's going to flow in this direction so the voltage will be clipped at 12.6 volts now let's consider the other direction because when dealing with alternating current the current can reverse many times in a second so as the current flows this way through D2 it's in forward bias mode the voltage drop is 0.6 and as it flows through D1 it's in reverse bias mode the voltage drop is 12 so during the negative half cycle of the sine wave, if the voltage is greater than 12.6, D1 and D2 becomes conductive and current will flow through those diodes protecting the device. If the voltage is less than 12.6, current will not be able to flow through D1 and D2. So thus the current will flow through the device. So the maximum voltage that will be applied to the device is 12.6 volts. Now, sometimes the power source can generate large amounts of current. And so you need a Zener diode that have high surge capabilities. Some diodes can handle a surge current of one amp. Some can handle a current of 10 amps, while others can handle a current of 100 amps. So depending on the application and how much current you think your device is going to uh, generate, I mean how much current the power source is going to generate, you may need to use a very high, a diode that can handle a very high current. And if the current exceeds the maximum current that the diode can handle, you can always use a fuse. So if too much current is flowing uh, to your device, the fuse is going to blow. The wire is going to snap and it's going to protect your device from further damage. So that's how you can create a high voltage surge protection circuit. The fuse protects the device from large amounts of current. The Zener diodes protects the device from high voltages. Now let's analyze the voltage of the input and the output respectively. So let's say we have a sine wave, which has a voltage that varies around 12.6. So something that looks like that. And let's extend it. And let's say for a brief period of time, there is a voltage spike. It doesn't last long, very brief. And then the power source returns back to normal. So without the Zener diodes to protect the device, the device can be damaged by that high voltage spike. But with the two Zener diodes that we talked about earlier, this is what's going to happen. The voltage won't go past 12.6. That is the voltage across the device. So as soon as we get that high spike, it's going to be clipped at 12.6, and then it returns back to normal. It follows the sine wave. And so this high voltage spike is sent to ground through the two Zener diodes. And that's how this voltage surge protection circuit works. It protects the circuit from high voltages and the fuse protects the device from high currents. So now you know how to create a high voltage surge protection circuit. All you need is a fuse and two Zener diodes. So that's basically it for this video. For those of you who want more educational content on electronics and circuits, check out the links in the description section below of this video because I'm going to be putting some uh, content in that area. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance, or you can even check out my electronics uh, playlist video tutorial. Right now, it's not in order. I'm still building it, but in time, it's going to be put into, it's going to be put in order. So feel free to take a look at that as well. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, I'm not sure what you're waiting for, uh, feel free to do that as well. And don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of any new videos that I'm going to be posting in the future. So that's it for this video, and uh, thanks for supporting it by watching it.